Aloha everyone, it's Christina from Shala Santosha, Shabu Yoga Therapy and Wellness. Today's special tips and tutorials is yoga for health, a healthier knee. We're going to focus on knees today. The knee is such an amazing part of our body. It carries our entire upper extremities and its weight and therefore it is the most common um, part of the entire human body that takes a lot of toll over time and therefore it is necessary to find time to give it some TLC. As a yoga therapist and a teacher and a cancer nurse, I often um, you know, invite people with knee sensitivity post-surgery or injury to come in and do a yoga therapy session on the knee to help journey the knee back to some mobility and to some strength and definitely some more bone density, right, to grow everything around it to help support us, especially our entire weight um, that we carry on it. So, without further ado, here are some amazing tips and tutorials that I know will work for you when you start it. Um, be mindful to take breathing along. Every time you inhale, you prepare and set the body, and on the exhale, you deepen to find the depth of how far you can tolerate and also remain at a state of relaxation for the knee to begin its therapy beyond its threshold. All right, so be mindful. Um, so here's some of those things. So I'm gonna take you first to something that I truly enjoy and have found great transformation benefits for all my clients and patients that are coming out of knee injuries and surgeries or pre-existing conditions, losing some bone density there, that to rebuild that strength for um, you know, a daily activity use of it. So try bringing your heels up and holding the back of your thighs. We're gonna start with a small, very easy restorative um, stretching first. Just elongating the heel and pushing it out. You can even sit tall. You can do this when you're sitting at your office chair or on the couch, on your bed. And again, just mobilizing the knee back and forth. You wanna kind of find your sitting to be nice and positioned up for airway. And again, don't go fast, don't start moving it very fast. We're not here for the abdominal core work. We're here for the knee. So we're really opening up the patella, helping the meniscus area and all the other tendons around it just gain some elasticity, some bone strength. And then I would do that about mm, five sets, nice and slow. And then maybe at the very, very end of the five set, just your heel is pointing up and just holding and then release and bring it back down to the floor or rest it all the way down. Taking it to the other side, again, holding the left side. Remember, if you do right, you must do left, even if you're only injured on the one side. You wanna make sure both, because one day or another, it's gonna compensate helping the other side, okay? So bringing your knee in, my heels is actually, I forgot to mention that, it's dorsi flex, not plantar flex. I wanna keep it towards the hip as well, because again, the knee and the hips and everything, they're all together as one unit, one family, okay? So again, pushing it out with your heel, bringing it into the socket, relaxing and extending, expanding, and again, bringing it into the socket of the hip. Out we go with the knee at full extension and into the socket of the hip. And again, one more long gaze. And again, release. Perhaps you can hold it. One, sit up tall. Two, three, four, and then relax it down. And I have one more stretch before we stand up and take some practice to the knee. And um, so this one, because the knee, like I said, is connected to the upper long bone of the body, you want to make sure that the kneecap continues to have its strength as it supports us 
for the many activities that we do to the body. So place your hands to the front, to the side of your body, or a little bit to the front, holding your mat, whatever works for you. Plantar flex your toe forward. That now shifts the kneecap. Bring it back, and again, the heel to dorsiflex. Point it forward just a little bit, and bring it back. Good, again, point it forward, and again, squeeze it back. One more, pointing it forward, and then again into the heels at dorsiflex. Now we're going to begin the yoga postures that help strengthen the knee. One of them that I like to use is um, on the seated pose, and then the others are on the standing poses. So we're going to start first with standing, and then we'll come down to the ground and work our way to the seated ones, and then there you go. You can give it a try any time of the day that you need it, especially in the morning when you're very much tight and awakening after a good night's rest and the first thing is like, ooh, my knee, and right, we do all these little things. <laughs> so here we go. My favorite, chair pose. Ooh, nobody likes chair pose. I would use the wall in the beginning when you're brand new at it. I would go ahead and place, you could keep your knee like you're turning internally together my toes are together, but my heels are slightly apart. And you could use the wall and take your squat and take your, your tailbone and kind of flush it a little bit to the wall. My back, I could go in and set it back if I like. Now you're feeling some pressure coming towards the front and that's okay of the knee. And just place your hands there and stay connected to your breath. And then if that's too much for you, release, because that's also your femur, your thigh bone, your quadriceps, your muscle radiating towards the knee. So just be patient, it's gonna help you feel better. Again, maybe do three sets, sit down even deeper. Maybe you wanna move your feet forward and you can get more space into that. Sitting, ah, oh, feels much better. One, my hands is on the top of my thighs. Two, Three, four, chair pose is amazing. Five, press the wall Ooh, and stand up. That's some of the sounds that I often hear with my clients and my patients. And again, we're gonna do one more because it's good for you. So again, this time, open your feet apart, a little bit about two fists apart, and we're gonna turn the feet in. Don't turn it out like a duck feet. Make sure it's in internal and again squat and take your whole glutes to your back and sacrum and sit if you can get a little deeper one hold your hands to your thighs two three four and push yourself a little bit forward with very little pressure on the thighs just to help you rise up that's known as utkatasana chair pose and that's really really good for your knee okay now, here's another one that's really important for the knee, and you've probably seen these many times. It's called the side angle pose. So it's where we open to the right, and we're about four to five feet, and we point the toes to the right, and we bend the knee, the right knee first, and then the left knee comes second. We always start with the right in yoga. And maybe this is as far as you want to go, I want you to try to figure out a way on how to just mobilize the knee going back and forth. This also is a great opener for the hip and the groin and femur area. And so not only is it effective for one part of the body, but also if you have a weak ankle and your feet, both sides, it's getting that full mobility. And again, you wanna rest your hand and take it down and press and just staying here helps the process of healing and strengthening. Coming up, pivot over to the other side. Don't change any more of the space. Just lunge, and again, if you wanna keep going back and forth first, just to kind of hear all these little crackings that are going on, so just be mindful to not go so fast, especially if you're post-surgery. And again, holding your hips down. 
focusing more on the knee than the hips in this part because we also use this posture for hip openers. And again, you're feeling your knee moving forward just slightly and stacked up to the ankle. And then again, coming back. Now we're going to go back to the right side and we're going to turn the back feet and we're going to do what's known as the warrior one and the warrior two. They're amazing for the knees. So again, option is to just take it here. Place your hands to Anjali Mudra, it means hands to your heart. Or open your hands up to the sky and just focus your direction to the breathing and to the beauty above. So that way in case your knee is throbbing and burning, you don't quit and you work on strength. Mm, beautiful. Reverse to the other side. And again, hands open. And again, option, just take your chest and become that warrior. If you can get your palms together, wonderful, but it doesn't matter at this point, we're doing the knee. Good, go back to your right side again. Really open up your heart and take your knee down, lunge. This time, open and bring your warrior arms to what's known as warrior two, here of Vajrasana B. You have this option again where your knee is back here. You wanna get that deeper, and again, go slow. And again, going back slowly, and again, Woo! <laughs> take it to the other side, you can keep your arms up again, don't lean forward, keep your body center, maybe this is as far as today's story goes, maybe another day, maybe another day, and before you know it, you might have that range of motion, again, expand, and again, really lunge. Again, deepening. And again, lunging. And release. Good. Awesome. Stay with the stance open. And now, take your hands to your hips. And we're going to do a couple more before we go down to the floor. And this is the last two of standing. I like to also just bend and squat down. And again, I can close my feet a little bit more if I like. And just again, bending and squatting down. Send the knee down and up. The little mobility goes a long way and up. If you can go a little deeper, parallel down. Ooh, to your hips, awesome. And again, beautiful, last one. <laughs> awesome, yay. So, those are some process that you could practice to help your knee. And now let's go ahead and come down to the floor and I'll show you a couple more. Um, this one is known as the seated pose in yoga and it's known as um, Janu Shirsasana. Janu means knee and Shirsa is head. Asana, of course, is a posture where we take the head to the knee and fold. However, we're not going to focus so much on folding the head to the knee, but we're going to focus on mobility of the hip and the knee being a one unit together to help you again with your knee sensitivity. So here's how it works. The right knee and bring it into the hip inside the left hip, the left thighs. Press your whole feet into the inner thighs. And maybe your knee can't even get that far, you want to use your block here. Little by little, the block maybe can come away and the knee will start to perhaps come down to 90 and straight down. You can just leave your hands in the front and work through just reaching forward and just relaxing your mind and your breath here. You want to bring your heel more closer to the pubis area, the reproductive area, than lower. Because when it's here, it's actually misaligning here. However, not everybody can move that after certain injury or surgery, right? So that's why using the block there maybe will help, see, as it moves me into the hip. And then I can change the block back into that. Okay, so again, you're just resting carefully and minding your breath here. We're going to change always to do both sides just so they stay strong equally together. Again, 
You want to slide and move, and this is all your knee can do today. Put a book, a pillow, or a block there to support it so that the weight bearing is safe. You want to move your heel. Again, the closer you can get the heel to the reproductive area, and even if the block is there, is better for the alignment of the knee and stay down. This also might grow one day and then you don't need this anymore and you'll just fold down and relax. So I really enjoy Jhana Shirsasana A, B, or C, but for now, this is Jhana A where you just bring your feet inside your inner thighs and do the same thing for both sides. Um, there's one last one before we tune out. You're going to take a block with you, or a book or a pillow, and this is going to reverse the knee into a different rotation, where you have to pivot, and you have to kind of open your feet this way apart, and this also helps strengthen the knee, especially the meniscus and the calf, but you'll have to put your block and sit on it to help reverse this knee here and I'm sitting in the center of the block. My feet is on the side of my hips, but this can be very, very discomforting to some people. And you wanna flex your heel on the left and bring your hand and just option to fold down. But this will also help build the other angle of the knee to strengthen. If I'm gonna leave the block, I'm gonna just roll off, let the knee extend out, shift my butt the other way, place the block there, move my knee, and then push myself back on the block, listen to how I feel, top of the feet behind, and I might feel a little already a pull there for some time, sometimes people will mention that to me, and then they just try to pull down. Remember that all of these will take time to heal the body, but if you're doing something about it, you're in the right path of a healthier you. Aloha, namaste. Thank you for tuning in and requesting yoga therapy for a healthier you. Bye. <laughs>